Hello, my name is Abdul Mati Asiri and I would like to welcome you in another Boeing 737 video tutorial. This video is the eighth in the series talking about the approach and landing in the Boeing 737. And this video will talk about how can you utilize visual cues to help you in a visual approach or the transition from IFR to VFR when you do an approach down to minimums in the simulator training. Now just a caution, the techniques I'm going to mention in this video seems easier than they are really in life. So I'm eliminating the uh, BFD from the scan just as uh, a demonstration for how powerful the tool is. I'm going to just disconnect the Autobyte Auto Throttle. We'll uh, set N1 for a reference uh, power setting, which hopefully will result in a safe speed for the approach. But then we'll do all the correction with just uh, looking outside. And in the second half of the video, we'll do a crosswind from the right. 180 degrees crosswind from the left and we'll do how we can do the correction without referring to the BFD. So for the runway center line, in a situation like this where we have calm wind or if you have a straight headwind, you can tie the runway threshold to a point here in the uh, clear shield panel and use that as a reference. But you need one more point to make sure that you are on the runway extended center line which is the far end of the runway. Uh, let me show you a better picture for that. So let's say here if you look at the far end, then we see the runway as a straight line. So the far end, the runway threshold aligned with our reference point in the clear shield panel, and that is for a headwind. If you have a crosswind, then you should have the same picture for the runway straight line, but the reference point in the clear shield panel might be a little bit different depending on how strong the crosswind is and the direction. Let's uh, take a look at this picture now. Here, if you look at the far end, you see that the runway is at an angle. And we know that we are right of the runway center line. And another example is here, if you look at the far end, you see the runway at an angle. And we know we are to the left of the uh, runway. Extend the center line. So you want something like that when you do the approach, at least as far as the visual picture of the runway. For the uh, second point, which is the... Uh, a sync rate or glide path. If you see now the autopilot is maintaining a 900 feet per minute sync rate. Now this gap between the runway threshold and the glare shield panel is the 900 feet per minute sync rate. So if you want to go for a lower sync rate then you decrease this gap. If you want to go for a higher sync rate you increase the gap. So let me now disengage the autopilot. Auto throttle I'm going to just set uh, reference N1 of 60% let's say and autopilot coming off we'll look up and we'll try to maintain the uh, runway using uh, the techniques I mentioned earlier so as you can see the runway is moving with respect to the clear shield panel but the thing I'm looking for for the runway extended center line is the far end just making sure that I have straight line and for the uh, glide path uh, utilizing the gap I have two red, two white, that's perfect. I think now I have three red, so I'm going to decrease the gap a bit. And once we are back on two red, two white, I'm going to return back to my original uh, gap, or uh, the reference gap. Slightly to the right of the extended runway center line, so small corrections. And now if you see that the runway is a straight line, true. But my reference point in the glare shield panel was somewhere here. So I need to turn to the right to make sure that the runway is aligned with this point. Uh, just to maintain the uh, runway extended center line. Otherwise we'll end up uh, drifting to the left. And we'll be off the uh, runway center line. So I'm going to go slightly to the right. Small bank angle. Very small correction. Wings level. And then monitor I think. And increase the gap a little bit. For me, the pipe is not clear yet whether it is too red, too white, or not. And we are to the right of the runway threshold or the runway center line. Returning back. 1, Might be three white and one red. So I'm going to increase the gap. Straight line, wings level. Looking at the far end, and I might need to increase the gap a little bit more. Okay, now two red, two white. Slightly off the uh, runway extended center line, but I think I'm within limits. 500. 
very small corrections three red will decrease the gap a little bit so just do the correction and give us some time to uh, judge whether you need to do more correction or not so in this case i'm gonna decrease the gap further we are two red two white now and let me stop here and we'll see how far are we from the uh, class level localizer So we are slightly half a dot above the glide slope and less than half a dot to the left of the localizer. And we did all that with just uh, looking outside with no reference to the PFD. So I'm going to reposition now for five miles. We'll have a crosswind from the right with 25 knots. We'll see how's the picture different. And then we'll do the shift to 25 knots from the left without referring to the PFD. We'll try to do the correction and see. So the wind is still calm now. I'm gonna let the autopilot uh, stabilizes the ND. I'm gonna put it here just to, for us to monitor the wind. And what I want you to notice is the position of the runway with respect to the glare shield in a calm wind. And now we'll change the wind to 25 knots with the autopilot engaged, or 24 knots rather. And we'll make it from the right. I'm gonna just decrease the uh, turbulence level to light turbulence and now as you can see the runway is moving with respect to the uh, windshield and the autopilot now is adjusting to maintain the uh, localizer as you can see we have uh, 20.071 at 24 knots And it looks like the new reference point for the runway is aligned with the fire warning here. And the gap, as we said before, it is between the threshold and the clear sheet panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disengage the auto throttle autopilot. We'll use again a reference uh, N1 at 60%. We'll continue the approach looking up as we did before doing the correction. And then what I'm going to do is switch the wind to 24 knots from the left. And without looking at the BFD, we'll try to uh, do the correction. So I'm going to disengage the auto throttle. We'll set 60% N1. Autopilot is coming off. Autopilot off. And we'll look up. And as we did before, looking at the far end of the runway trying to maintain the center line and then using the gap as the reference to maintain the uh, glide path okay so let me do the switch now to 24 knots from the left and before releasing as you can see even without any input on the control column, the airplane nose will move into the wind. So because the wind now is coming from the left, the nose of the airplane is going to be pointed in the left or towards the left. The runway, which is in a calm wind, is somewhere here. Now it's going to be on this side of the windshield. So I'm going to just try to maintain wings level use the movement of the airplane to my advantage to maintain the correction. We are slightly to the right of center line. The, uh, the airplane is being drifted away from the runway extended center line because of the wind. And now we are trying to find our new reference point to maintain the extended runway center line. So just try some angles and see if it works for you, now it looks like we are moving toward the runway extended center line. So I'll, I'll maintain this angle for a while. I need to increase the gap here because we are getting a little bit high above the glide path. Now we have two red, two white. Might need to move in the seat just to make sure that we can see the runway. And now we have straight line and the airplane is moving towards the left. So I'm using a reference point and just moving. Uh, one point after the other so I was aiming first for the clock switch 
but looks like the clock switch was too much the airplane was still uh, flying to the left of the runway center line so now I'm aiming for this point between the clock and the mic switches if it doesn't work we'll go with the mic but as, as I said previously if you just maintain this picture of a straight line then you will be okay you don't have to tie the uh, runway threshold to the uh, glare sheet uh, panel it will help in my opinion but you can eliminate it if you like for the gap is the same thing you just maintain the gap increase the gap decrease the gap to uh, do any correction so slightly to the left so small bank angles small corrections so maybe the mic switch might work better for this wind and we are getting a bit high so I'm going to increase the gap slightly because we are very close to the runway I don't want to get the uh, sync rate and let's stop here and see by the way if you get three whites don't get too aggressive with the uh, with pitching down because if you are close to the runway you don't want to trigger the uh, uh, pull up pull up call out or sync rate sync rate uh, maximum vertical speed that you are aiming for close to the ground or for uh, stabilized approach is 1000 feet per minute so let's take a look inside and see we are half a dot above the glide slope and we are right on the localizer so as you have seen we were doing the correction was just by reference to the outside looking at the runway with no reference to the pft so before i conclude this video let's just take a look outside and this will help us uh, or this is the uh, transition to the next video that i'm planning to do which is the transition from ifr to vfr in your simulator training when you fly down to minimums now imagine that you are inside uh, clouds you don't see the runway up to 200 feet AGL the whole approach your head and body are aligned with the airplane axis and when you break visual you need to uh, look to the right and that initial reaction of you might throw you off the uh, the localizer because for the past three minutes or so your head has been aligned with your body which is aligned with the airplane nose but when you break visual your head now should be tilted which is the same angle that uh, is the difference between the airplane heading and the airplane track so keep it in mind when you have a crosswind whether it is a strong or light in IFR that there is an angle between your head and your body when you break visual and I'm gonna talk about this point further in the next video uh, please if you have any questions comments or concerns leave a comment and until next time this is Abdul Mati Asiri wish you safe line and smooth landing thank you for watching